Hi YouTube, this is a follow-up video that I, for uh, this puzzle box that I made, I guess going on about six years ago. I made the video about five years ago, and uh, since then I've gotten many requests in the comments section to show uh, plans or, or more about how this was built. Um, I don't have any plans for it as I've answered in some of the comments. Uh, I sort of made it up as I went along, and as a result it's actually fairly crude. So I'm going to take this apart as much as I can, uh, what's not glued together, and I'll show you uh, what I did um, to, to make it. And uh, you can make this box using <clears throat> the exact tools I did or different tools that do roughly the same idea, the same concept, um, to, to make sliding parts uh, however you like. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to see how this works. But basically, as this opens here, Push one side this way, one side the other way. The front pulls forward. It's a little sticky, just like it was five years ago. Come on now. There we go. And then it opens up. And uh, as you can see, uh, I've got two hinges in the top that are recessed mortises, but not even flush cut. It's, it's nice to see that your skills have improved over the years, so it's funny to look at this thing now. Um, but what holds it locked is I've got a, a brass screw up here and it's a it's a pan head so it's rather wide flat head with a flat bottom and that's what's important for how it uh, engages this piece here uh, so what I've done is uh, this is the this is the hole right here that the br the brass screw goes into when you fold it shut much like that you can see it just goes right into that hole there uh, so once uh, once it's in that hole, you then you can slide this piece back, and you can see as it's sliding back, the, the screw when this piece is lined up goes straight into this slot. And this slot, I'll remove this piece and show you how it works. But then once you you slide this piece over, the bolt is now in that position. The, I mean the head of the screw is now in that position, and it's locked. It can't it can't be lifted up anymore. So I'll show you how that works. So what I've done is. Oh, come on now, slide forward. You know, it's winter, and once it's winter, these things shrink up and get pretty tight. Okay, so you can see down here on the bottom, this is what I'm talking about, it's pretty crude. I removed a portion of the bottom piece here so that this can be lifted out. And you can slide this a little bit further down, and it pops right out of the hole. It's just two screws, that's it. Just pan head screws, flat back, and this allowed me to adjust it so that I could uh, make sure that I had the right amount of tension holding it against this piece that it would it was tight but not so tight that you couldn't move it and um, at the time I didn't know how to do that with just wood so this enabled me to to do it using screws but what you can see here and I'll focus a little on this piece this is what the screw is is sliding in um, the brass head screw slides in this and this is the same thing I've done for every piece that slides on the box uh, I'm not sure if this is focusing just right. Just have a cell phone camera, but it's it's called a it's called a slotted key. They come in different profiles. This is one of them. It's basically a wide cylinder and a narrow neck, and both have cutters on them, and that's so you can cut a hole wider than the exit is on the top. So it, it allows you to to make keyhole mortises, do all sorts of things. Um, yeah, so basically the way I've used, what I've used it for is I basically pushed the router in here, had the router key depth set um, at what I thought would be enough wood that would be strong enough, and I guess I've, I've reset it so that the neck was about, oh geez, it looks like maybe an eighth of an inch into the wood. And, uh, and then I basically measured a path that I needed, and I just basically put this wood up to the box and marked where, where it would be when it was finished and about where I wanted it to be when it was moved over all the way and that's what gave me my length of path and basic, basically it was just a, uh, a push of faith. I had this set up on the router table this, uh, this slotted key at the depth I wanted and I pushed the piece into the router table and then moved it over to a stop that I had made uh, that would get it to that location. That's what made that piece there. And then put the two screws in, um, marked my spots with, a, with an awl and then used a drill to, to drill a little pilot hole so the wood wouldn't split and then put the screws in. The same exact thing I just mentioned, you can see the other side of it here. Um, this is the, the slotted key here that the, uh, 
that the, the front piece slides in. It's basically a T-section. You can see where I've removed some of the wood here. That's where the, the pan head goes into from the top. And you can see it's revealed there, part of that pan section. And if you look at it head on here, you can see I've done the inverse of that section on the bottom piece. So what I did here was just set the, the router at a different level. It's a little clearer on this side. You can see both of them. Um, set the, the uh, slotted key at a different level, a little deeper down into the piece, and then ran it here uh, and, and mortised out uh, this one here on the router table. All, uh, not all the way to the back. Um, th actually, I'm sorry, on this side piece I did run, run it all the way to the back, but on the bottom piece I left, I stopped it short of the end. Uh, and you'll, I'll show you why in a second. But on this piece here, when I did the sides, I basically just adjusted the fence on the router table so that I wouldn't be sliding all the way through and making a, an indentation hole. Basically, I just came in from the side. And then I flipped the wood around and removed some of the other side. And since the depth remained the same, I was able to slide one onto the other. And that's what's done over here, too. And since I did both at the same time, you can see that both sides are pretty even in that the outside, there's more wood removed than on the inside. So outside more removed than inside. Outside more removed than inside, it's they're they're even. I uh, did them both at once. Um, and to get the box together, the outside box, these are just finger joints, nothing fancy at all. And if you've got a router table, it's really easy to make a fence for these. That'll just do it as a jig. Um, and basically, you just make one, and you have a piece of wood that's the thickness of the finger you want, and that that acts as a stop, and you place it in the router stop you just made. And I use a straight router bit for this. If I had to look at it now, I'd say it's a half inch. Um, and then you just have another half inch block next to it that basically spaces you off from the router bit, and you make another one. And then you move the fence, you make another one, move the fence, and then you keep moving the jig. You can find these jigs all over YouTube, I'm sure. Um, it bas it's basically a finger joint jig, and you can make them yourself really, really easily. No, see no need to buy one. So I would just check on YouTube for that. So now we move on to the back here. And how this bottom piece is stopped when it tries to slide out. It's stopped. I did these slotted keys for the side pieces all the way to the back and then you can see they're not here anymore so basically I just cut them off around here and uh, this piece, the bottom piece, only has the slotted keys routed to about this spot and then it's solid wood to the back. You can see they don't come through. So when I assembled when I assembled this box I put this piece on the sides first and then put the back on with this piece and that's what keeps it from sliding off the front sliding off the front here you can't pull it off and the back I've done the same exact thing on the back of the bottom that I did on the front here you can see this it's just a little bit longer and uh, and that's all it is um, this bottom piece is, is holding on the back piece is holding on the bottom keeping the bottom from sliding forward when it's locked in uh, basically drill the hole. You know, man, it's hard to get this to show up. But, let's see. Oh, there it is. That's not too bad. Uh, you can see the pan head screw there. And I drilled a hole, the, the diameter of the pan head. And there's the slotted key right there that it slides in when it's pushed in. So you just have to line it up, push it in, and then it slides over inside the slotted key. And now it can't move forward anymore, so it's locked. That's really it. Um, so to do a box, finger joints, um, basically they're super easy. You can use whatever size straight router bit you want if you're going to use power tools. Um, any straight router bit. I mean, if you want to do a quarter inch one, you just make a jig that uses a quarter inch router bit. And you can do an, an eighth, you know, an inch, whatever you like, and you can space them regularly. You can skip one, and uh, the jigs you do if you just double up a tooth, so instead of doing a quarter inch jig, you'd, you'd make two quarter inch pieces put next to each other, so you could do a quarter inch route, then a half inch space, quarter inch route, half inch space, that sort of thing, and then you'd do the inverse on the other side. Uh, so you can make all sorts of patterns, it doesn't have to be something very straightforward. Uh, but this was the first box I'd ever made using finger joints in the router, so I figured I'd try it. Uh, but it's more fun to use hand tools, definitely, you have a lot more control ends up with slight irregularities and gives the box a little bit more character. I'll show you a box I did using hand tools in another video. Um, but that's basically how, that's the entire box. So I can just reassemble it really quick and show you again 
how it slides together. I'm trying to stay in frame here. Come on, box. Work with me. There we go. So it slides forward, and then you just slide this one piece in. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention here. If you make it, you make areas on this, on this with uh, less resistance here. So basically, it's hard for it to slide here because I've tightened these screws on the on the front of this piece. These screws here. So if you want an area for it to stop so it doesn't slide past there, I didn't want it to slide into here and want to fall out all the time. I just drilled a little wood out, and I found that when I drilled wood out of the fence, out of the face there, it acted as a little bit of a stop. You know, the wood kind of came out of alignment of the key and didn't want to go any further without a lot of extra effort. And so that worked well to keep the whole thing from coming apart by itself. It hasn't come apart by itself since I put it together. So six years ain't too bad. All right. So that's it, just slides right in. Line it up with the face. Just make sure the backs, make sure the back is lined up there. And push it together. Uh, front slides over. Back slides over. And it's locked. If I were to do it again, I'd do it with much tighter tolerances. You can see this side, the joint is pretty tight. This side it's a little loose, but hey, it's a beginner's project. So it's a lot of fun. If you want to ask more questions in the comments section below, go right ahead. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe, I'll be adding uh, more videos about woodworking, uh, woodworking projects that I've done and in the direction I'll be going, um, which is timber framing. And uh, that's why you see some of those giant chisels in the back there. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Thanks very much. Bye.